Atheists of Reddit, what religion makes the most sense? Among the ones that believe in some kind of supernatural power, I'd say deism, if that's the one that says something created all of this, but has since kind of fucked off and doesn't meddle in it. I like your way of explaining that. Kinda feels like the people saying Buddhism are atheists from Christian dominated countries who are interpreting Buddhism in abstract terms of what it theoretically could be or choosing to divorce the mythological aspects from the general underlying philosophical concepts without considering the possibility of doing the same with one of the religions they are more familiar with. I don't mean this as a kind of slam against anyone who is doing this, by the way. I empathize with that kind of thinking. I'm Hindu, but was raised in America and mostly knew my religion strictly, based on the teachings and mythology, not from talking with other Hindus. And when I was younger I thought Hinduism was so much better than Christianity, because Christians were so flawed in their practice of their morals. But then I actually started to meet other Hindus and suddenly I thought oh, these guys can be just as big of stupid assholes and just as hypocritical as those Christian doucher bags. I guess it's not a flaw with the religion itself. People are just dicks sometimes. It's just that I only had the chance to see the terrible Christians and not the terrible Hindus for a long time. I think there is something remarkable about any kind of sun worship. Not that I personally would want to start saying prayers to it. But it fascinates me because there's almost a logic to it. It was here long before us. Its creation resulted in the creation of all the planets, which allowed us to exist. We are all stardust, and thus a part of it. It gives us warmth, light, day, and night cycles, seasons, a means to track long periods of time via number of times we've gone around it. And it'll be here when we are all gone. Mind you, there is also a kind of eldritch horror vibe to it, as its expansion will kill our world in fiery apocalypse. Also if you look at it too long, you could go blind, and it can give you cancer. That's the thing. There's an existential crisis that I imagine every Christian experiences at least once in their life. If God is omnipotent and benevolent, why do bad things happen to good people? A pagan in antiquity would never have this crisis because their gods were not all benevolent and loving, nor were they really omnipotent outside of their specific domain. They have their own agendas and demands that don't necessarily have anything to do with human morality. If something bad happens, it's because the gods have not been appeased, or they want to remind us of our place, or just because they felt like it. I have never understood the idea that Buddhism is somehow not a religion. They believe you have a soul, and that your soul goes somewhere after you die. They believe you should be concerned with what happens to your soul after you die. And they reinforce their teachings with the promise that something good will happen to your soul after you die. There are Buddhist myths that involve demons, monsters, and supernatural beings, etc. I get that the line between respect and holy reverence may be hard to define, but it also seems like they hold Buddha to be a divine figure worthy of worship. I'll fully admit that I'm not a subject matter expert. I'll also fully admit that I haven't heard much to convince me that Buddhism is supposedly more rational or reasonable than other religions, but that's also something that I don't need strangers on the internet to agree with me about. There is no real difference between a religion and a life philosophy you speak of godly but even that is very vague and the things by convention called gods in many religions could just as easily be called mythological creatures. The gods of many religions were mortal and could die. There were also many religions that worshipped the sun as a god, which evidently exists and is not supernatural. A large amount of many of such debates are purely matters of semantics the problematic part is that many jurisdictions award rights to religions that they don't to life philosophies and then a court has to decide what is and isn't a religion which is often a matter of convention of what historically was called one. I'm an atheist but maintain a daily practice in line with Zen Buddhism. This involves meditation, some bowing slash chanting, 
really an extension of meditation and attending a Sangha, Buddhist community. The vast majority of the Buddha's teaching is in line with secular slash atheistic views, but he lived in a time where he was heavily influenced by ancient Indian philosophy which also evolved into Hinduism and Jainism. This includes some mention of divine beings, not a creator god, like we imagine in the west, more like spirits on a different plane of existence, and reincarnation. The best explanation of reincarnation in secular buddhism is like, we are waves on an ocean. The waves rise, peak and dissipate, and the water forms the basis of more waves. Yourself does not stay whole, in fact, a core buddhist principle is, that self is an illusion, but some of you is the basis of the next life. Even if you strip that away I think it is perfectly possible to have a meditation practice without the religious trappings. Meditation is the main thing which has helped me overcome depression and anxiety, along with medication, counseling and exercise. Also I do like the community aspect, it is something that secular slash humanist communities lack, and fulfills my need for spirituality without blind faith. If you are interested there is a great YouTube channel called Out Secular Dharma that explains these topics quite well. I'd also recommend the books, Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright and Waking Up by Sam Harris which explore the ways Buddhist views of consciousness are in line with our understanding of it through neuroscience. Buddhism in its base form is just self-therapy. Learn to be okay with yourself, be kind to others. You can detach it from mythology and live it as a general life philosophy. All that said, Sikh people are the nicest religious people I've ever met. I've never met a bad Sikh, so maybe they've got some secret source we're all missing out on. I'm not inclined to start giving religions passes as the good ones, but I do admire the Sikh commitment to feeding anyone who shows up hungry. Organizing and distributing charity is basically religion so utilitarian good, and in my experience the Sikhs do it with the fewest strings attached. The religion has admirable principles, just like most other religions. But in order to create an identity, they also have rules they are supposed to follow. Like they are not allowed to cut their hair. Sikh women can't thread or wax. They have to wear a turban. I have a Sikh friend who does remove body hair and says it makes her lose a little respect in the community. Speaking as a lifelong Buddhist, this isn't true. It's comparable to saying that Christianity in its base form is just loving your neighbor. It's comparable to saying that Christians can choose not to believe Jesus was God. I don't doubt there are people who believe this, but most Christians across space and time would consider that view insulting at best. Catholic Orthodox, Protestant, many restorationists alike, they consider their affirmation of Christ's divinity, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension to be what divides Christians from non-Christians. Similarly, while there are people who identify as Buddhists who don't place emphasis on the spiritual aspects, they're in the minority. A part of Buddhist doctrine is that beliefs don't exist in vacuums. What you believe tints the entire way you see yourself, others, and the world. This tints the way you behave. If you didn't accept one aspect of Buddhist teachings, you'll arrive at something completely different. It won't be spiritually helpful, and it might even be harmful. There are many different schools which claim to be the most effective path to enlightenment. They diverge quite a bit, and there's a lot of debate. However, they draw upon a set of shared beliefs which include beliefs that Westerners would consider devoutly religious. I am what you describe as extremely biased but reformed Judaism. Hear me out, part of, my family is Jewish, and I'm an atheist, however, I still identify as Jewish in a cultural sense. There are many Jewish people that simply do not believe in God like myself. I've never felt that out of place in Jewish spaces, even though I'm a baratial atheist raised in a multi-religious household. Reform Judaism, in my experience, is not focused on the religious aspect, but more of the cultural one. And frankly, I like to be a part of a super accepting culture that welcomes and helps anyone, regardless of prior religious affiliation slash race. While there are some religious reformed Jewish people, they don't try to force their beliefs on you and accept the possibility of there not being a god. 
So, I guess, the culture of reform Judaism makes the most sense to me. I have studied other religions, not super in depth, but this is what works for me. I love the community and don't feel pressured to relinquish my atheism. I'm a guy, and I was raised as an agnostic atheist, but I grew up in an area with a lot of Jewish people, mostly reform. Many of my teachers were Jewish, a lot of my friends were too. Questioning everything is acceptable in reform Judaism. Don't believe in God. Cool. If you ever want to debate we are down, but we respect that about you, is the essence of their reactions to my beliefs, which was very refreshing in an area that also has a large conservative Catholic population. My best therapists were all Jewish as well, regardless of your belief in a deity the religion and culture just really shapes people to be strongly convicted about their beliefs and deeply invested in helping others who are marginalized and oppressed, expecting nothing in return. To this day Jewish friends always welcome me into their lives and homes when nobody else would because I'm traumatized and can difficult to deal with and sometimes I'm unable to take care of myself. The true definition of loving kindness. I have so much respect for Judaism as a result. Sikhism. As an atheist, it's much easier to believe a religion that says all religions are actually worshipping the same god. It makes more sense than all the others claiming to be right especially when the three major religions all have a very similar origin and concept of a singular divine being. In Islam, we don't claim to have a different god. Allah SWT roughly translates to the god not a god. If we claim to have a different god, that would imply that there is more than one god, which would kinda destroy the monotheism belief of only one god lol. That's why we JST stick to saying the creator makes it easier on everybody lol. I know a lot of Christians, Jews and Muslims who agree that they have the same god. But Sikhism is cool too. I think Unitarianism. My understanding is that they let you believe what you want, but you have to respect other and care for the planet. I'm an atheist Unitarian Universalist. I became a member of the church and everything. Most of the people there were Christian light. Some were formerly Jewish, some were still Jewish, some were deist or agnostic, and some were atheist like me. That we are in a simulation, and God is at a higher abstraction layer. That is the only logical implementation of God I can come up with. It would be like how you have godlike powers in The Sims. You can violate any physical laws, pause time, change things, but they can't do those things and have no way to know you exist if you don't tell them. Definition my favorite answer. You win Charlie. That's Hinduism bro. It's literally said, when universe created two things comes out Kyle, entropy kinda stuff, or in layman term time, and maya that is illusion. Simulation word probably wasn't invented at that time so illusion. So many store had this world is nothing but an illusion made up of matter and we are souls reincarnating, respawning, until we complete game, and become gg god. Different people have different philosophy and interpretation of Hinduism. And yeah we are all gods nobody is NPC maybe animal, that's debatable. And it's our action that causes change, karmic cycle, kinda like MMORPG. Buddhism, I'll tell you why. You know the term karma and reincarnation? Well your perception of them is likely incorrect. You see western religions automatically assume immortality, it's at the baseline of the thought. If you die you live forever in, and go to either good place or bad place. For Buddhism they don't want this. Why? The basic tenet of Buddhism is that all life is suffering, life, and existence is shit. No matter who you are, what you are, if you are alive, you will get sick, you will get old, maybe, you will die. These are inevitable, and every loving thing will suffer this. Life is suffering. So Buddhists want to escape they don't want to be reincarnated. They don't want immortality like western religions they want out. So Buddhism is a faith slash religion. That life is shit and miserable for everyone and everything. Seems like the most sensible one to me. Jainism is a non-theistic religion. They have no gods. The teachings are basically centered around non-violence towards all living creatures. And I mean all they even consider bacteria. Lol. But even Jainism has a reward if you successfully live a life of non-violence after death. And it could be argued 
that the typical motive behind non-violence is this said reward not compassion. Religion is just nonsense. One thing to consider is that the diet of those who follow Jainism is very strict. Not only are they vegans because of the non-violence towards animals aspect, but Jains will not even eat root veg either such as potato or onion because that could risk harming an insect. That's like being an ultra vegan my dudes. Satanism, even though it's technically an offshoot of atheism and is really just a philosophy, all that was needed to convince me is to do a bit of digging around the Church of Satan website. The satanic temple's tenets really speak to how I felt for a very long time. Pluralism, belief in science, control over one's own body, compassion, justice, rectifying mistakes. I mean how is it possible to think that these are bad things just because of the name? To be honest religion is just a way of life. Every religion has a set of principles and customs that have been changed in some way by people and often misinterpreted. In my opinion I think in basic principle all religions talk about how to live life as a human. Learning about different religions will just give us an added perspective towards life. I was raised Jewish, so Judaism. Not only is it the right of Jews to question everything about Judaism, it's a responsibility. Hence how many texts there are with 50 different opinions on the Pentateuch. Same here, also raised Jewish and taught to question everything. One time in youth group we stood in a line where one end was full belief in God and the other was total atheism and a large part of us were on the latter side. I knew someone who worked with the rabbi. In order to never have to mention God during his bar mitzvah, I knew a trans man who converted to Judaism and was happily welcomed. Wrestling with God, questioning all, respecting other religions and peoples, and generosity are what I was taught, and it makes sense to me. Man, none of them. But Hinduism has, by far, my favorite quotes. With this one from the Nsad I asked as my absolute favorite religious passage of all time. But, after all, who knows, and who can say, whence it all came, and how creation happened, the gods themselves are later than creation, so who knows truly, whence it has arisen, whence all creation had its origin, the creator, whether he fashioned it, or whether he did not, the creator, who surveys it all from highest heaven, he knows, or maybe even he does not know, even god doesn't know how the universe got here, I just love that idea. And a religion pointing out the obvious, that gods must by definition come after creation. Just love it. I'm a Hindu, by birth, and I feel like I need to clarify this. The gods you're referring to here aren't exactly gods to us. We have Divas and Azuras. A rough translation of that would be gods and demons, but it's much more complex than that. We have Divas who, though generally good, tend to do some horrible horrible stuff out of ego, insecurities, etc. Similarly, we have Asuras who, though generally bad, tend to do some good things out of honor and devotion too. The closest thing we have to the Abrahamic religion's interpretation of God are three deities. Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the protector, and Mahesh slash Shiva, the destroyer. You'll often hear of tales of Rama and Krishna. They are nothing but avatars, incarnations, of Vishnu. Also, the whole 33 core gods thing is a mistranslation. It's actually 33 types of gods. To put it in a very crude and probably controversial way, Hinduism is what you get if you give paganism complex emotions and intellect. Also, the caste system originally began as a class system. It used to be very flexible and was decided by profession, not birth. But unfortunately, as society progressed, the system got more and more rigid, and it was exploited by the upper caste, Brahmins. Many Hindus have a belief that when Brahma created humans, he created Brahmins, priests, from his head, Kshatriyas, warriors, from his hands, Vaishyas, merchants, from his thighs, and Shudras, workers, from his feet. And then there are the Untashables, or Dalits, who are unfortunately treated as scum to this day. I personally believe that the Untashable thing was a result of Aryan settlement on Ravidian lands. After the fall of the Indus Valley civilization, the Aryans came to India and established the Vedic civilization. 
Then as they spread throughout India, they encountered the Dravidians in South India. My assumption is that the Dravidians who assimilated into the Indo-Aryan culture, which we now call Hinduism, were well off, but those who didn't were then treated as interchangeables. So yeah, Hinduism has its ups and downs. And if you think what I said was insightful, then let me tell you that even I have barely scratched the surface here. The end. Thanks for watching.